Hello YouTube! I'm going to be reading from A New Concept of the Universe, written by Walter Russell. Oblating Spheres, number 60. It must be known that the north-south polarity which divides the universal condition of rest into two opposite conditions of motion to create matter must have a counterbalancing polarity whose office it is to avoid the two opposed conditions of motion to restore the condition of rest. Each of these oppose each other. One pair gains ascendancy for one half of the cycle. The other pair then gains it. This principle is demonstrated by the life half of a life-death cycle being stronger than the death half. Then the death half becomes stronger until the cycle is completed. In either half of the cycle, polarity controls its balance. But the office of north-south polarity is to prolate mass from its beginning at the base of a cone to a sphere at the cone apex by extending its poles, while the office of the counterbalancing polarity is to oblate mass from a sphere to the base of a cone by extending its equators. In an oblating sphere like our dying planet, the east-west polarity has gained the ascendancy. These two poles control and balance the extension of the Earth's equator, the expansion of its volume and its orbit into ever-lengthening ellipses as the Earth gradually flattens and increases its distance from the Sun. Number 61. The converse of this effect is exemplified in our prolating Sun. It has not quite matured into a true sphere. Its north-self polarity is still pre ponderant and will continue to predominate until the sun reaches true sphere maturity at its half cycle point. Eons will pass before the four poles unite and reverse their position and direction, which will begin the flattening of the sun at its poles and its eventual disappearance by throwing off sequential giant rings. The sun is still prolating while its planets are becoming increasingly oblate. The moment that Earth or Moon begin to oblate, that moment their equators leave the plane of the Sun's equator and their elliptical orbits are extended by the extension of their two east-west foci. Newly born planets and moons, like Mercury and the four inner moons of Jupiter, hold to their planes of birth on the Sun's equator until they begin to flatten. 